Welcome to my study. After 30 years, I've concluded that everything you need to know to be successful in every part of your life is found in one book, the Bible. Our subject has been how to develop moral intelligence. We've already done session one. If you missed it, please go back and make sure you check in. So, let's take a look. Here's where we started. How to develop moral intelligence. Imagine with me that this is you down here, and you're going to have to navigate through life somehow. The truth of the matter is, it's quite simple. You cannot run a good race on the wrong track. How are we going to get there if we don't have intelligence? Obviously, we need that. But of all the areas of intelligence we need most, it is moral intelligence. Now, our subject today is a little bit different. We talked about what is moral intelligence, but now we want to go to the sources. Moral intelligence. How do you find it? Where is it? Where? How does one possess enough intelligence about mor moral and immoral, or right versus wrong, um, forward versus backward? How, how are we going to figure this all out? How are we going to find some sources where, in fact, we can... Uh, count on them because of all the things you want to do when you get to the other side of life is have lived it right and not wrong. The consequences are so very severe. So our subject then is uh, sources. And let's first start with most people think that man is smart enough and he can decide for himself what is right and wrong. But let's take a look at what the scriptures say. As it is written, there is none righteous. No, not one. Not a single one. Look at this. One translation says there's nobody living right. Not even one. We've all gone the wrong way at times, right? There's none that understands it has understanding. In fact, uh, we already know how important that is because uh, it's like nobody knows the score. Understanding is, as we've already learned, the faculty is what intelligence, under, the faculty of understanding is what intelligence is. Intelligence is the faculty of understanding. So our problem is there's nobody that seems to have the understanding. There's none that seeks after God. No man stirs up himself. In fact, no one wants God's paths. We want to go our own way. That's why that famous scripture that's so well known, it basically says this, that, you know, um, we've all together, we've all like sheep, we've gone astray, we have turned everyone to his own way. And so God had to do something about it. And so man's in a bad predicament and his ability to decide what is right versus wrong is quite important and paired. In fact, they have all gone out of the way. All, everybody's left the right track. And translations is that everyone has turned away from the right way. They have become unprofitable. Ah. They do a lot of things that aren't profitable. In fact, are self-destructive. Even when they are together, when, when several people or a whole bunch of people get together, they are useless. They become unprofitable. Why? Because they don't know the difference. Moral intelligence is lacking. But look at this now. There's none that doeth good. Not a single one. We're all kind of a mixture of good and bad. Nobody just does the good. In fact, when translation says no one's no one's living right, not, not a single person. Let's get more of this. Their throat is an open sepulcher. Well, that's maybe not too easy to understand, so let's put it this way. Their talk, watch this now, is foul and filthy. Uh, uh, uh. We can't say amen, say ouch, right? Their talk is foul and filthy. That's what's going on. Like the stench of an open grave. It's just disgusting, isn't it? With their tongues, they have used deceit. Oh, lying. 
uh, their tongues are loaded with lies. How can these kind of persons ever decide what's right and wrong? How could they be the source of moral intelligence? The poison of asps is under their lips, like snake venom dripping from their lips. Their mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Oh, uh, maybe, maybe we need to stop for a moment and think about that one. Is that what it's like today? Is the mouth full of cursing and bitterness? Yeah. In fact, uh, their feet are swift to shed blood. What does that mean? It means they are quick to damn other people and to condemn all the way. I'll point their finger and put people down. Destruction and misery are in their ways. And what is that? They litter the land with heartbreak and ruin. Oh. Every damaged child, every damaged marriage, every damaged business, they ruin, they litter the whole land with heartbreak and ruin. Should we then expect these people to know how to have moral intelligence? Look at this, the way of peace. Have they not known? Whoa. What does that mean? It means they don't know how to get along with each other. They just can't get along. There's no fear of God before their eyes. They've already written him off. They never give God the time of day. And all these things are found right out of the book of Romans. This is the problem. <clears throat> They're gone out of the way. They become unprofitable. And so it's, it's not too difficult, is it? Can you see it? How can mankind in this condition ever have moral intelligence or decide what it is, define it, because we're in such bad shape. So let's move on to another evaluation instead of man. And by the way, just maybe before we leave that, it's not just man, it's, it's all, all men get together. In fact, one scripture you should really know is, thou shalt not follow the multitude to do evil. Ah, all right. So you can tell, if you've been thinking along with me, that mankind is not capable of being the source of moral intelligence. In fact, he is really going the wrong way, almost entirely. So where else can we look to for some moral guidance as to what is right and wrong? And so we probably should talk about the government as a source of moral intelligence. Now, this is going to be complicated, but I'm going to try and really view it short, okay? And I'll give you the shortened version. Because when it comes to nations and constitutions and governments, there are only two types. There's one that follows what's called natural law, which is the law of nature, God versus another philosophical idea called positivism. Hmm. And um, let's go to the American Constitution for a moment and get a couple of things straight. Because the Founding Fathers said it was these truths are, look at these truths are self-evident. Men are, look at this, men are created. While wow, there's an idea, they believe that God created man. Man is created. That they are endowed, look at this, they're endowed by their creator ah, with certain un unalienable rights. Now, let, let's move on to the Constitution. The American Constitution says this way, and you can look up your own, whatever country you're in, to see what your Constitution says. But ours says this, when in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands 
with which has connected them to another group of people, and to assume among the powers of the earth. All right, now watch this. To assume among the powers of the earth. Now watch this. The separate and equal station to which, are you ready now? To which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitled them. This country was decided at the beginning that we would know the right from wrong based on nature's law, the laws of nature's God. Now, in contrast with this, we have what's called positivism. Maybe an unfamiliar term, but catch up, and, and you, can, you can check it out online. Positivism is the rejection, look at this now, the rejection of theism, believing that social rules, morality, right and wrong, right, can be positively and logically derived from a scientific approach. For example, sociology. Now, this sort of thing began with uh, August Kant, um, and he introduced the whole idea now that we can determine right and wrong, not based on the idea of nature's God, but we could decide for ourselves. And so governments are founded on one of these two concepts, either right and wrong as determined by natural law, the law of nature's God, or positivism, which is the rejection of the God idea and the belief that we can positively and logically decide for ourselves from some kind of a scientific approach what's right or wrong. And this is the century that began what's called science, sociology. Now, <clears throat> there's a problem with this. And one of the things you want to evaluate is whether our nation now is still following the moral intelligence established by our founding fathers by saying that we're going to get our moral intelligence from the law of nature and nature's God? Or have we shifted? Have we rejected theism, rejected God, if you please? and decided that we'll figure out ourselves what's right and wrong, what's good and what's evil. And so from Congress to the Senate to the, huh, to the Supreme Court, now you check it out. Is the ruling that they're making based on the laws of God? Or have we got a new concept now? Have we decided that it's okay to kill as many little babies as we want to? Can we really just, yeah, you, you decide. You decide whether these America is still operating by natural law, the law of nature's God, or have we drifted to positivism? Because if we have, we're in big trouble. Here's why. The wicked shall be turned into hell. Now, this is not about some shale. This is not about some geographic location in the interior of the earth's burning fires. It's they will bring hellishness. Look at this. So the wicked shall create hell. And the nations that forget God will also create hell. So we need to ask ourselves, in fact, have we gone backwards from the laws of nature's God to decide what's morally intelligent 
or have we got a new idea? And is the Supreme Court, is Congress, or what, what are we doing? What is the basis of even our legal system? So there's a lot of trouble when we forsake the laws of nature's God as the basis of moral intelligence and go to positivism, which is the desertion of God. Huh? And the consequences are so devastating. In fact, I want to take a look at this scripture. Maybe. Why do the heathen, those are, who are not followers of God, of nature's law and the law of nature's God, why do they rage? Yeah, why are they yelling and screaming at each other? Why do they imagine a vain thing? <laughs> and forget, in fact, let's look at a translation of this. Look at this. What fools the nations are to rage against the Lord. How strange that men should try to outwit God. <laughs> that we're smarter than God? So this text asks the question, why all the trouble? Why have we got people against people, pitted against one another? Why country against country, nation against nation, race against race? Why is this? The next verse tells us the answer. Here it is. The kings, which include the presidents and the leaders of the earth, now watch this. They have set themselves, don't miss this now, and the rulers take counsel. They have gotten together against the Lord, against the laws of nature's God. We scrapped them, we threw them out. And in fact, against the Lord's anointed. And this, look at this, this is what they said. Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. Let's not keep those old-fashioned ideas that our country was founded on, where the moral intelligence was embedded, naturally derived from God. Let's do our own thing. Positivism. We can figure it out for ourselves, and we'll decide if it's okay to desert your children, desert your wife, lie, steal, commit adultery, fornicate, do perversion of things. We'll, we'll decide. And that's why nations are in such big trouble. So, make sure you got this straight. What's going on right now and the catastrophes and the devastation and the damage from one coast to the other, from one border to the other and cross to the other borders of all the nations of the world. What's going on is because universally we have said, we don't want you, God. We'll decide what's right and wrong. To those people, the scripture says this, woe to them that put good for evil and evil for good. Big trouble coming. So you need to know what's going on, so let's take a look at this last verse on this subject. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Here's what you're against. We are against principalities. We are against powers. We are against rulers of the darkness of this world. We are against spiritual wickedness in high places. And now you can understand. We've been taken over from the rule of law being based upon God. And now governments have decided. Now, before I leave this, 
positivism. So, in the nation of Germany, a man named Hitler got elected to office, passed legal laws, passed laws that were against nature's God, but they were, they seemed logical and have positive results, and it ended up with the millions being devastated, murdered. Why? Because a government that's not based functionally on the laws of God, but decides in favor of positivism, without God, we'll just go our own way. We'll decide, and we can produce positive and logical results, and we'll decide as a government what you can do and you can't do, what's right and what's wrong. So we've talked about the failure of mankind to be able to establish moral intelligence, and now the government. So let's, let's move on to one that... Um, Let's check out, let's, let's go back and let's check out God. And so we have to ask this question. Where is wisdom? Where can it be found? And where is the place of understanding? Remember, intelligence is the faculty of understanding. Where are we going to get smarts, wisdom, and where are we going to get Understanding. Ah. Man doesn't know it. Man knoweth not the price that he can't even buy it. It's not even found. Look at this in the land of the living. Can't, there's nobody alive who's got the right answer. Not smart enough. And doesn't have the understanding. So whence cometh wisdom? And where is the place of understanding? seeing it as head from the eyes of all the living peoples. And he's even kept close from the fowls of the air. Now here's the answer. God understands the way thereof, and he knows the place thereof. He is so smart. He knows where it is. He saw it, he searched it out, he prepared it, and he communicated it so we would know, and even said to us in clear terms, behold, the fear of the Lord, that's wisdom. And look at this. And to depart from evil is understanding. Moral intelligence is understanding why we should depart from evil. <clears throat> he focused on wisdom. He made sure it was all set, tested, and ready. And then he addressed the human race. And he said that the smart thing to do, the moral intelligent thing to do, do is to shun evil. Well, obviously the question now becomes, and I put it before you, how does God communicate moral intelligence? If he is in fact the only source, how does he get it to us? So let's spend a few moments on this. Number one, through nature. Look at this great scripture. The invisible things of him are from, from the creation, from nature of the world, are clearly seen, look at this now, being understood by the things that are made, that's you and I, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that we are without excuse. We just can't miss on this. It's, God says the way you know it. It's so clear. So the first way that God communicates moral intelligence is through nature. Ask the beasts of the field, and they shall teach you. Whoa, really? 
Yep. Check in. Make sure you study the beasts of the field. Check them all out, all of them, because God designed them to be instructors. They're not just decorations. As the beasts, then they said, look, and, and, and now, and check with the fowls of the air, and they'll tell you, the birds can tell you. Oh, so you ought to know about the eagle, and you ought to study the birds of the air, because God has placed them here. The beasts of the field, the fowls of the air. You can even look at it, speak to the earth, and it shall teach you. Even the earth shall teach you. Oh, my goodness, take a look at it. Under the hills, you should lift your eyes. Oh, my goodness. And every tree. And oh, don't I wish I had time to give you 10,000 pictures right now. And let you see the flowers. Oh, my goodness. Speak to the earth. It shall teach you. Oh, my goodness. So it teaches us through nature. Now, look at this. You speak to the earth, and it shall teach you. But the fishes of the sea, even the fishes of the sea, shall declare unto you. Oh, the diversity, oh, the complexity, oh, the size, and oh, the, the fishes are designed to teach us. You know why? Look at the scripture. Is there anybody that does not know that all these things that the hand of the Lord, oh, he made this stuff. He made this stuff. And in whose hand is every living thing in the breath of all mankind. So the first thing God does is to communicate what he is like and what's right and wrong, what's good and evil through nature. In fact, hey, can I take one more moment? Let's go back to a scripture. The heavens declare the glory of God. The earth shows his handiwork. Let's take a look. One scripture says, God's glory is on tour in the skies. God craft is on exhibit across the horizon. Want to take a look? My goodness. And oh, had we time, oh, had we time. He counts all the stars. He names all the stars. God, got big plans for us because God communicates, first of all, through nature. Secondly, he wants to communicate in moral intelligence directly to our hearts. Look at this now. Um, it shows the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience bearing also witness. And then man goes into this thing of their thoughts, either accuse them or excuse them. And so he has made this great deposit in our hearts. So man intuitively, intuitively, originally, intuitively knows right from wrong. It's written the moral laws of God are written in our hearts. In fact, look at this translation. God's law is not something alien to us, imposed upon us from without, uh-uh, but is woven into the very fabric of our creation. There is something deep within us that echoes God's yes and no to what's right and to what's wrong. It's written in our hearts. Uh, the problem is we haven't guarded our hearts and we've let other stuff come in and ruin it. But it's written in our hearts. In fact, let's look at one more scripture on this. They glorified him not as God. They weren't thankful. They became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. And they decided they were really smart. And in fact, what they did was they, they actually became fools. Mm. But it's written in our hearts. Mm. They pretended to know it all. 
in spite of the fact that God put it there. So number one, God teaches moral intelligence through nature. And number two, he puts it in our hearts. The third thing is this. He actually came here to show us the way, to show us exactly what's right and wrong. That's why God came here. This is the greatest event in human history. Imagine God one day laid aside his garments of kingship, splendor, walked across the dark, down across the star-studded constellations of the universe using the planets as stepping stones for his feet. And he came in view of the darkened hills of Judea and ailing wretched human reached out for a deliverer. And that night, God came here as a babe who would have fought. And he taught us right from wrong. And this is what he said. Look at this thing. I am the way, and I'm the truth, and I'm the life. I am the way, you'll never get lost. I am the truth, you'll never be confused. I am the life, you will never be depressed. So you see, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. He came here to communicate moral intelligence. That's number three. Number four, he gives us his written word. Put it down so we could actually, he guarded over it. He superintended, he told men what to say, and he made sure they said the right thing, and he, and he decided that he would supernaturally keep it for centuries so everybody would know what. So, hence, the Bible. And so we say, thy word is a lamp to my feet, and it's a light to my path. And in fact, David said, I have refrained my feet from every evil way, that I might keep thy word, because that's how we know right from wrong. Look at this. How sweet are thy words <laughs> to my taste. Sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through thy precepts I get understanding. Remember, intelligence is the faculty of understanding what is right versus what is wrong. Now watch this now. Don't miss this. Therefore, I hate every false way. Oh my goodness. Can you see the importance of God's Word? And it doesn't end there. Because there's another way that God helps us to know and have moral intelligence, and this is it. He actually gives us His Holy Spirit. For when He, the Spirit of truth, has come, He will guide you into all truth. You will know what's right. You will know what's wrong. He will guide you personally. You can be about to do something and the Holy Spirit actually prompts you. To, oh, no, don't do that. He comes to help us. And that's how we know the difference between truth and the spirit of error. Look at that thing. When he has come, he will reprove the world of sin, of what's right and what's end of judgment. In fact, uh, let's take a look at this translation. When he comes, he'll expose the error of the godless world's view of sin, of what's wrong. He'll expose the error of the godless world, remember the positivism, right? View of what's right, not just sin, but what's right. And he will expose the error of the godless world's view of how to make right decisions, and especially does this apply to what's right and wrong. Lastly, on how does God communicate moral intelligence. We understand that he does it through never failing love. Oh my goodness. And we have known 
and we believe the love that God has for us. God is love. He that dwelleth in love dwells in God, and God dwells in him. And my friend, that is how you get to develop moral intelligence, the source. I shouldn't say how, because we're going to come to the how. But the truth of the matter is that of all the sources, mankind, government, multitudes of people, the majority, none of them know the facts. But God can let you know exactly. Now let's go back to the diagram one more time. Because this is you, and you will know exactly what ways to take. You will know right from wrong. Because you know God.